Hey there! In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a storyline project with a quiz, but the quiz button is not active until the user has visited all of the modules in advance. Let me show you what I mean. I've got this project built out, a graduate student orientation, it has three modules, get ready, get organized, get help. And their quiz button here, I programmed it to be visible, but it's disabled because the user hasn't visited all three modules yet. So let's see what happens. If I visit one, again, this is a shortened version of this project for demonstration purposes. I visit the module, go back to the menu, that's grayed out. I move on, head back to the menu, that's grayed out. Okay, quiz button still inactive. Let's visit the last one, pop on back. There we go, the quiz button is now active and I can pop over and take the quiz. This is pretty easy to build out in Storyline. Uh, I will show you how I built this out and how you can kind of test it to make sure it's working properly. Now I'm in a version of this project that is only partially built out, so I can show you how it works. All right, so I'm in the editing mode for the Storyline project. You can see the structure here in the store view. I've got the main introduction section that contains the menu. I've got my one, two, three modules, and there is the quiz at the end. So if we're on the quiz, I've already got the states built out for the buttons. I've got a normal, visited, and hover. You can adjust the buttons however you want to look however you want or to behave however you want. If you want to force users to go in order through the modules, that's pretty, pretty easy to do as well. The take the quiz button is built out similarly to the module buttons, but its initial state here is disabled. So a disabled button should always look like it's disabled so that your user is not surprised or confused when nothing happens if they click on it. Um, so I've built it out to be kind of a, a faded gray with a slightly different font. And then when it turns normal, I actually added a little, it's hard to see, added a little orange border. So it's um, kind of extra clear that this button is now active and it's probably the next thing that you should click on. So the first thing you need to do is to create some variables. I've got a whole presentation on, um, using variables in storylines. So I definitely encourage you to check that out for more on triggers and variables. This is pretty easy to set up. I know the names of my three modules, get ready, get organized, get help. So what I did was, is I went into the title slide for this module. There's only, there's only one slide in this module. Ideally, you would go to the last slide of a module to do this, um, to make sure they've maybe gone through the entire module. I only got the one slide, this is my last slide. You can see I've already got two variables um, programmed here. I didn't wanna belabor the variable creation, but to create a variable, hit that green plus button, give it a name that makes sense to you. I named all of them something like the module name with the word complete. So this one's a get ready module. I'm naming it get ready complete because the idea is this variable is tracking whether or not this module is complete. I'm going to make it a true false module, which means it can only have two values. It's either true or it's false, makes our lives really easy. And its default value is going to be false because of course, when you first enter a tutorial, you haven't visited anything yet. So all of the modules completion should be set to false. So that's that. Um, you can see I already built this out on the other two slides uh, in advance. So the only other thing you have to do on this slide is now we have to add a trigger. The variable is ready to go. You always have to program the variable before the trigger. Now let's do the trigger. So for the trigger, what we wanna do is change the value of this respective variable to reflect that the user has completed a module. So we want to adjust variable. Uh, I want to change the get ready complete variable to value true when the timeline starts on this slide. Again, if you have a module, it's probably going to have a whole bunch of slides. You'd wanna put this on the last slide of a module. For demo purposes, I'm putting it here. It's gonna adjust this variable to true when the timeline starts on this slide. And I'll show you really quick. I've got the exact same 
uh, trigger set up on the get organized module and on the get help module and all has the respective um, variables built in there. The last thing you have to do, so set these up first, go to each module, set up the variable, set up the trigger, then and only then do you go back to the menu and put the trigger in here that's going to measure all of those variables and see if they are true or false. So it's a little bit complicated. Bear with me here. What we want to do is you want to change the state of the quiz button to normal so that it's clickable only once all three of these modules variables show that they have been completed. So new trigger, change state of, take the quiz. This is a, a really good reason. I can't saw this really fast. It's a really good reason to name your objects in the timeline. Um, I did go ahead and name this take the quiz so it didn't just have a default, uh, you know, text box or square um, label in the timeline. This really helps to name all of your objects when you're creating triggers. All right, so I want to change the state of take the quiz to normal when the timeline starts on this slide, but only if my three variables equal true. So the variables I just created, I want to name all three of them here and they should all equal true for that button to turn to active. Okay, so the default value for all those variables again is false because when the user starts this tutorial, they haven't done anything yet. So I wanna make sure they all equal true and only if all three of these equal true, the state of take the quiz, that button right here is gonna to change to normal when the timeline starts on this slide. So. Um, that also means that after every module, they are returning to this menu. And I think that's a good structure for a tutorial if you have multiple modules to return your user to the main menu because it gives them a sense of place in a tutorial and also gives them a sense of how much they have done and how much more there is to do. Setting a user's expectation is always really helpful for their um, experience, especially when they're kind of sitting here by themselves doing the tutorial. It's nice to know what you have done and what more you have to do. All right, for testing purposes, you can add a text box. Let me show you how I did this. Um, that has the variable values in it so you can make sure that they are working as you expect them to. Let me show you how I did this here. So all I did was I typed the name of each module and then I put the variable after it. So to insert a variable here, I'll show you what this looks like when we preview. Uh, you just go to insert. You're going to insert a reference because we're referring to a variable. And I'm going to put in the get ready complete variable. So there it is there. All right, so this is just for testing purposes. Obviously, you don't leave a text box like this on screen when you publish. You can just move it off screen and it'll still be there when you enter editing mode. But right now I'm going to put it on screen so I can test this out and make sure everything is working the way I expect it to. I just did a save because I save frequently when I'm working on things. All right, so let's preview the entire project and see if this works. Title screen, let's go. I'm on the main menu slide and right here you can see the value of each of my variables. So in one place, like a little command center, I can see I set up my variables correctly. At least I can think I set them up correctly so far so that they all start out with the value of false and the take the quiz button does not work. So let's visit my modules, get ready, head back to the menu. All right, that one now shows visited as its state. Ah, and the variable has changed in its value. The get ready module is now set to true. Great. Get organized, head on back over. The button's changed. Oh, get organized is now set to true. Quiz button still doesn't work. Let's visit the last module pop on back, that state has changed. Ah, look what happened here. Now the quiz button is set to normal and it's clickable. So you can see I changed the look to give that little orange border around it and you hover over it, you can see you can click on it now. And if you click on it, it takes you to the quiz. So, I mean, it really is that simple to combine states, variables, and just a few simple triggers to set up, um, a situation like this where the quiz is locked until the user 
completes all of the modules. And you will make your life easier if you are new to variables in particular. And just to stay organized in general, if you are an experienced e-learning developer, to have a little text box like, like this on the main screen, just to make sure the variables are behaving the way you expect them to. You can also set up a little button for yourself um, on this screen here. Uh, let me show you really quick for testing purposes. Uh, that you can change all the variables at once if you wanted to, just so you can avoid the work of having to go through to each module. Let me show you what I mean really fast because it's kind of a fun little hack. Um, so I'm gonna turn this into a button, value true when the um, user clicks. What else do I wanna do? Okay, so I have to set three triggers here. So I'm gonna attach three triggers to this button so that it changes all the variables at once. So it's already got get organized. Let's copy, paste. Change this one to get ready, copy, paste. Change this one to get help. All right, so now if I click on this button, it's gonna set variables to true, and there's my three triggers there. So let me show you how this works. Again, for testing purposes, you wouldn't leave this on screen, but if you do end up having a really complex project, having little tricks like this, oops, I didn't wanna publish. Little tricks like this can save you a ton of time in your development because you're not chasing down bugs. You have kind of a command center, you can see them all on screen. So everything's at false. If I set variables to true, they all change to true. Now the quiz button didn't change. That's because you do have to refresh this slide. I guess I could have built in one more trigger that um, jumped back to the slide. Um, but heading out, heading back, restarts the slide, and now the quiz button is good to go. So that's a little trick for um, bug testing. You can set that off to the side. You can set that off to the slide, the slide here. And when you publish, the user won't see these things. But again, these tools will be here for you when you develop. Um, and this, again, is really helpful if you have like very long modules where you don't have to want to have to go and like click through the entire modules just to make sure everything is working properly. You can just click that button once, kind of reset the slide here. You can add, um, actually, guess one more button here or one more trigger where you just restart the menu slide, jump to menu slide, and then um, make sure that this is working the way you expect it to. All right. I like to say in e-learning, there's many ways to get the same thing done. This is just one way to make this button active when all of the modules have been completed. There are other ways to do this, of course, but Storyline overall makes it pretty easy. Again, I do have a video on variables and triggers that goes more in depth into those things if you want to check that out. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe, and I hope you have fun developing your own project.